Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. I spent the morning at the school and then Dragon Man and I took a detour through town. He needed an extra pair of school pants and a new lunch bag. But now I am home and trying to catch up on the news and what is going on in the world. And in my Tumblr and email inboxes. Oh my word. My world has not stopped spinning since we moved. And I'm starting to feel so guilty about those overflowing inboxes. I feel like a nasty ogre not replying to your wonderful email. But this week, I'm going to make a point of spending an hour per day catching up. At least until the 20th of May when exams start. So, okay, that's it. I saw that the king was at the Windsor Horse Show on Friday and there were some cute pictures of him and Zora Tyndall. I really adore Zora and Mike. They appear so natural and down to earth. <laughs> anyway, I know people hate me talking about the king's health, but sometimes we are purely learning from each other and don't mean any harm. When I was so sick last year, it was discovered that I had colitis and I was prescribed prednisone, which is the cause of cortisone. Now, I know we are not all the same and we all react to different things in different ways, but although the cortisone bloated me a little, I turned into the Energizer Bunny. I can't remember the last time I felt so alert and energetic. It is very, very likely that the king has prescribed or may be getting a hydrocortisone or even a corticosteroid, which may result in him feeling a little more energetic and which may not necessarily be a reflection of the state of his health. But let's move away from what may or may not be the case. I know you don't like it, but unfortunately, I am a say it as I see it type of person. But never mind. The reason why I even mention this is because I read that there had just been a review of more than a thousand patronages and charity presidencies. And it is said, that the king and queen consort Camilla will take on the bulk of the late monarch's patronages, which effectively means that the king himself is taking on 300 new patronages. Now, how does one say this without sounding rude? And I'm really sorry, my dear subscribers and listeners, but that just does not make sense. I know if I give my views and opinions, some of you will be mad at me again, but the fact remains that regardless of whichever medications which may make the king feel like Superman, he is still a very, very sick man. And that is all I'm going to say. And you can mull it over for yourselves. Now, I've talked about this numerous times, as had others like Lady C, Michael Cole, and I also remember Richard Eden talking about it, to name just a few. When the king started talking about a slimmed down monarchy as the Prince of Wales still, nobody could even imagine or predict that two senior royals would be lost in a short span of time. And to add insult to injury, two of the younger royals, and when I say younger royals, I actually mean under 60, were actually the ones to so-called step down. When Harry decided to swap the United Kingdom for the United States and Prince Andrew was effectively forced to retire, the monarchy effectively lost a significant portion of its working royals. And now, three, four years later, this situation is even more dire. One of my favorite royals, Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent, officially stepped down as Colonel of the Scots Guards after 50 years of service just over two weeks ago. 
and he will be replaced by Prince Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh. What this is, however, showing us and is solid proof of is that the Queen's cousins and other working royals are actually aging out. It is indeed very sad, but also very true. The Duke of Gloucester, who is a working royal, also turns 80 this year. This natural slimming down of the monarchy, and sorry, I do not know how to put it more politely. I'm truly sorry if I offended anyone, but no matter how we look at it, the fact remains that if some of these patronages and charities are not distributed wider and further into the family, many charities and patronages will suffer. I cannot imagine William, for instance, maintaining his own patronages, taking on his father's patronages, and then added to that the 300 patronages his father took on from his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. It will just get more and more until no human being can possibly deal with it all. The buck also does not stop with patronages and charities, but also includes public events, etc. There are only so many hours per day, and a human being can only fit in so many events per day, per week, or per month. In my opinion, the king really needs to start thinking about the future and consider the consequences of a largely diminished monarchy in the future. Now, I personally obviously do not have the answers because like you all, I do not personally know any of the royals. I am not privy to their private conversations and have no idea how willing or not any of the younger ones would be to become working royals. Beatrice, in my opinion, has the education, the emotional intelligence, and in a way the looks to make a fine working royal, even Eugenie. There is no reason why she would not do well in patronages relating to the arts, to children, conservation, etc. And if they can't or won't, well, then I suggest William sit down with cousins Zora and Peter and offer them jobs and titles. But will they accept? I don't know, but to do the mathematics surrounding the royal family is becoming more and more concerning by the day. I really, really wish the king, taking his own mortality and that of the queen's cousins into consideration, will for once drop his guard, his pride and his ego and admit that he and his son in the future will need help. Now, just a little tidbit about Harry. We know by now that Harry will be at St. Paul's on Wednesday, and then he will be off to Nigeria for a face-off with Boko Haram. (laughs) I'm sorry, that was a tasteless joke. I know, but ridiculous actions deserve tasteless jokes, I think. Anyway. Despite everyone going, the king is too busy and won't see Harry, I prefer to believe my intel, which tells me that Harry will be seeing the king. For how long or exactly when, I don't know. But from what I am told, Harry will meet with his father. It does appear, though, that the more formal meeting courtiers were hoping for will not take place as William is scheduled for events away from London on Thursday and Friday. It is also Archie's fifth birthday on Monday, so it is unlikely that Harry will be in town much sooner than the 8th. I can't see Meghan allowing it, but I'm sure that Harry will squeeze in at least 15 minutes for his ailing father. My dear friends, I have many things turning my stomach at the moment, 
from personal matters to the state of the world, but the monarchy as symbol of hope and continuity just does not give me that same vibe anymore. I can just not see Harry's story and relationships with the cable actress and his family end well. It is like watching an intense drama unfold, and you know there is only one way out for the main character. It reminds me of Rambo, Last Blood. You know, as Rambo rides off on his horse despite being bloodied with severe injuries, etc. Well, I see Harry's story that way, despite the fact that Harry is obviously not the warrior hero like Rambo. But the principle is the same. At the end of the day, Harry will walk away symbolically, severely and heavily injured, and it will be up in the air whether he will survive his self-imposed trauma. Okay, guys, I have a feeling it will be a hectic, very busy royal week, so I am going to say goodbye for now, and if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. (laughs) I'm only joking. Take good care of yourselves until we meet again on the next one. Bye.